keep staring at each other, or are you going to invite me in? Oh yes, forgive me. Do come in. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I have an offer to make. Interesting for you, vital for me. You mentioned an interesting offer. What exactly was it? Mr. McPherson, you've been in Paris for some time and I need your help. Only you can investigate this case. I'm ready to pay anything. Could you give me any more details about the case? At the moment, it all seems rather nebulous. You probably haven't heard about the Orfe case, Mr. McPherson. The newspapers have kept it quiet. A couple of American tourists were brutally murdered. They were my sister and her husband. I want to know the circumstances surrounding their death. These murders were committed in Paris. Do you know whereabouts in Paris? A hotel in a chic part of Paris in the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They arrived there about a week ago. They were found dead in their hotel bedroom. Are the police handling the case? If they are, it may well complicate things. Do you know the name of the inspector in charge of the investigation? The detective in charge of the investigation is named Lebrun. You know, the police are the same in every country, Mr. McPherson. Whether you're in New York or in Paris, you mustn't be in a hurry. Lebrun is no exception. To be honest, I'm not sure I should take the case. Firstly, because where there's a murder, there's a murderer. Inspector Lebrun is in a better position to arrest murderers than I am. Mr. McPherson, I have no faith in the police. The 8th District Police Station, Le Brun especially, is trying to hush up the affair. All they care about is keeping their reputation as a chic area. I don't want to seem overly interested, but why don't we settle my fees before we go any further? This case may take you several days. I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of successful investigation. Your offer is very reasonable. I accept. I owe you a lot, Mr. McPherson. Much more than the money I'm paying you. Your sister and her husband, they were both American. What exactly were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. With Mr. White, her wish came true. They were so very much in love. How did they die? Are you sure they were murdered? It may just have been a terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. I don't get it. I've never worked for you before, not here nor in New York, yet you come to me and ask me to find your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation, Mr. McPherson. I find your nickname spooky to be charming. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. The suspicion surrounding you is totally unfounded, naturally. You are the man I need for this investigation. Discreet. Capable of seeing beyond appearances. You'd like me to begin right away. I think I have all the information I need to begin. You're sure you haven't forgotten anything? The police didn't find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled very comfortably. In luxury and with old family heirlooms. It was a passion they both shared. I hope to have results quickly. I'll be in touch with you when I've made some progress in my investigation. Goodbye, Miss Blake. I ask only one thing of you. Be discreet. The police must not suspect you're involved.
if you'd like to meet me. Hello, what number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Postie Telegraph, go ahead, please. I'd like to send a telegram to New York, please. The addressee is one J. Wells of Pinkerton's National Detective Agency, number 57 Broadway. The message reads, Need information on woman named Sophia Blake. Stop. I've made a note of it. It will leave this morning. Done. What number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the Elysee 1528? I want to speak to Sophia Blake. Right away, sir. There is no answer, sir. Call back later. Suitcases are heavy. And do not forget, young man, the elevator is still out of order. Oh, brother! What can I get you, sir? My name is McPherson. I'm a private detective. You really are a private eye, just like in the movies. You've even got the hat, and you're American too. Oh, private dick. Yeah, a real detective, investigating a real murder, the one at the Orfei. Golly, I wish I was a detective. So you're investigating the Hotel Orphe murder? If you agree to help me, you kind of become my assistant. Really? Of course I agree. An adventure, <laughs> finally. Tell me about the evening. What was the atmosphere like? Yes, it really was a most unusual evening. Did you have any unusual customers that evening? You must be joking, my friend. Strange customers are all in a day's work for a waiter. That evening was no exception. Like the man who spent the evening alone at a table over there, besides the window. He left empty-handed. Been stood up, I imagine. Can you tell me any more? You know I would like to help you, but... I think you had better deal directly with the police. A man named Lebrun is leading the inquiry. What do you mean? A series of strange coincidences. The telephone was no longer working. The lift breaking down at the Orphée, uh, that still has not been repaired, incidentally. And to top it all, a violent storm breaking out just as the door closed behind the last customer. First thing the next day, I found out a double murder took place, right here, almost right above my head. Does the elevator often break down at the Orphée? You'll have to check with reception at the Orphée. I have no idea. Thank you. You're welcome.
Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Are you the manager? My name's McPherson. I'm from the International Office of WAI, Worldwide American Insurance. I'm investigating events that took place in your hotel several days ago. The murders. The insurance company. Perfect. The Whites left, shall we say, a rather substantial bill that really needs to be settled. You are here about the bill. I'll come clean with you. I... My employer is a rich American lady with no ties to the Whites. She wants to take a room with you, but recent events have made her sick with worry. I have to check that she will be in no danger here. I have to give my report tomorrow, so you see, I do not have much time. Oh, that changes everything. What happened in room 507 was totally unique. My client insists that everything is checked before she confirms her arrival. A stay of several months, maybe even a year, must be carefully prepared. So I have to visit the room. What number did you say it was? 507? The thing is, the police have not yet finished their investigations. Room 507 would be impossible. But the room next door, room 505, is identical. It even has a nicer view. A long-term stay calls for maximum comfort, does it not? Follow me, sir. I will lead the way. This is it. Unfortunately, room 507 is not accessible. The police has not yet solved this uh, sordid affair. But rest assured, it is an isolated incident. The hotel does not have a reputation as... What the... What is going on now? Would you excuse me for a minute? Don't mention it. In any case, I've always preferred to visit at my own pace. Well, well. The key is still in the lock on the other side. If I could push it out, maybe I could use it on this side. Who told you I was a detective, madam? I am a seer. I simply see things others do not. A clairvoyant? Really? What luck. So am I. I can feel the suffering radiating from you. Have you been the victim of visions, madam? Rather like me? Visions of murder? The White's murder. Young man, your instinct spoke to you. You are an artist, are you not? I'm also an artist. Perhaps you'd like to buy one of my paintings. Take this. They say Napoleon brought it back from his Egyptian campaign. It represents thought, the Egyptian god of arcane knowledge. The Ibis of the Nile. It will help you on your quest. I shall be there to help you find the right path. I will remember what you said. Who knows? One day I may even need your clairvoyance. Well, should you have need of guidance, do not hesitate. Come back and see me. There, 